Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Protests for democracy resume in Swaziland with Global Action Week. Taliban announces leaders of acting government after capture of capture of Panchi. Counter protests planned in Brazil as Bolsonaro rallies far right supporters. Venezuelan government and opposition sign partial agreements amid talks. And in our video section, we take a look at the mass rally against three farm laws held by farmers in India. In our first story, pro-democracy protests have intensified in Swaziland with the launch of a global week of action. Mobilizations were called across all 59 constituencies on September 6th. However, security forces deployed in towns and cities dispersed and stopped protests. Meanwhile, sources have stated that protests continued in the country's predominantly rural areas. Mass unrest had spread across Swaziland in May and June to demand an end to monarchical rule. At least 70 people were killed and 200 were injured in the crackdown. Hundreds of people, including at least two members of parliament, were also arrested. Swaziland has an unemployment rate of 24% and nearly 54% of the population is living in poverty. King Maswati III controls the economy and has been accused of running all sectors for his own profit. The country's health and education sectors are also severely under-resourced. According to Pudemo, many people are forced to resort to illegal cannabis cultivation to survive. This in turn puts them at risk of being caught or harassed by the police. Officers reportedly also shot and killed a man last week. They claimed that he was wanted for dealing in marijuana. Protests, may, protests against the killing were met with police violence and tear gas. According to The Guardian, the only legal cannabis grower in Swaziland is a US-based Profile Solutions Incorporated. Protest actions, including the delivery of a petition to the UN, have been planned throughout the week. Protesters will also block four of Swaziland's border gates with South Africa on Thursday. Members of the Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSATU, will hold a demonstration in solidarity on the other side. In our next story, the Taliban has named Mullah Mohammed Hassan Akhund as Afghanistan's acting Prime Minister. A spokesperson stated on Tuesday that Abdul Ghani Baradar had been appointed Deputy Leader. Sirajuddin Haqqani will be the new Interior Minister and Mullah Mohammed Yaqub will be the Defence Minister. The announcement followed a day after the Taliban captured the Panjshir Valley. The group had been fighting with the R National Resistance Front of Afghanistan led by Ahmad Massoud. While the Taliban declared that the war was over, Massoud said that the resistance forces would continue fighting. However, he and former Vice President Amrullah Saleh have reportedly fled the country. A local resident told Al Jazeera on Monday that the situation in the valley was dire. 130,000 people were reportedly trapped amid shortages of basic goods. Meanwhile, protests were held against the Taliban in Kabul and the Balkh province on Tuesday. Protesters also denounced the alleged involvement of Pakistan in the fighting in Panjshir. Gunfire could be heard as Taliban fighters fired several warning shots. Female protesters were reportedly also detained in several locations in Kabul. Tolo News stated that their camera person, Wahid Ahmadi, had been detained for three hours and his camera was confiscated. We now go to Brazil where protests against President Jair Bolsonaro are set to take place and are taking place across 160 cities on September 7, that's today. They have been organised by the Out with Bolsonaro campaign along with trade unions and social movements. Tuesday's protests will coincide with a march to Brasilia by supporters of the far-right president. Serious concerns have been raised about an attack on Brazil's democratic institutions. Bolsonaro stated on August 21st that the march was preparation for a necessary counter-coup. He accused the judiciary, the left and the apparatus of hidden interests, according to him, of conspiring against him. He also singled out two Supreme Court judges, taking them to take Tuesday's rallies as an ultimatum. Bolsonaro's approval rating has fallen to 23% as the COVID-19 death toll in Brazil near 600,000. He is also facing a pandemic-related Senate inquiry and separate allegations of corruption. Brazil is also facing rising inflation, soaring gas prices and a water crisis, leading to high energy bills. Meanwhile, Bolsonaro has escalated attempts to discredit and attack Brazil's institutions. He has openly praised the former military dictatorship and threatened to cancel the 2022 elections. Members of Brazil's Congress have warned that the September 7th rallies are modelled on the January 6th attack on the US Capitol building. There is also a threat of violence given that Bolsonaro's rallies are often attended by armed supporters and police officers. In our next story, the Venezuelan government and right-wing opposition have reached two partial agreements. Both sides met for a second round of negotiations in Mexico between September 3rd and 6th. The first agreement recognizes Venezuela's sovereignty over the mineral-rich Guyana Esequiba area. Guyana and Venezuela have been in dispute over the territory for two centuries. The two agreements will establish mechanisms to allow Venezuela to recover assets and money in foreign accounts. The government has said that these resources will be used for economic recovery, social protection, vaccine procurement and hospitals. Other issues on the agenda include the complete lifting of the unilateral coercive measures imposed by the US. The country's justice system and special drawing rights with the IMF will also be discussed. The next round of talks will be held between September 24th and 27th. 
And for our final story, we go to India, where hundreds of thousands of farmers held a rally on September 5th. The event was part of a renewed wave of mobilizations organized by the United Farmers Front. With the struggle set to complete 10 months, farmers have intensified demands for a total repeal of the three farm laws. The protests have been met with right-wing propaganda and repeated police violence. The central government has also not held any talks with the farmers since January. With more protests planned this month, here is a video on Sunday's historic rally. देखिए देश के अंदर बहुत अलग अलग स्तर की लड़ाइयाँ चलती हैं यहाँ पे और हम ये जो आंदोलन है ये खाद्य सुरक्षा के लिए आंदोलन है और ये जो आंदोलन है ये मैक्सिमम यूनिटी का पॉइंट है स्ट्रैटेजिकली और इस समय पे जो बीजेपी की फासिस्ट और तानाशाह सरकार है उससे जीतना इन तीन मुखाले कानूनों को पीछे धकेलने के लिए देखिए सरकार को तो सुनना ही पड़ेगा आ, क्योंकि आप देखिए ये मुजफ्फरनगर में ये रैली लेने का और एक भी बहुत बड़ा महत्व है आ, आप जानती है 2013 में इसी मुजफ्फरनगर में बीजेपी और आरएसएस ने बहुत ही बड़ा दंगा फसाद ये किया था उसे एक सांप्रदायिक ध्रुवीकरण हुआ था पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में और उत्तर भारत में और उसी के चलते बीजेपी 2014 में देश में सत्ता में आ गई आज उसी मुजफ्फरनगर में हिंदू किसान मुस्लिम किसान बाकी सभी धर्मों के और जातियों के किसान एक साथ आए हैं ये आठ साल के बाद और ये किसान आंदोलन की वजह से आज ये एकता पूरे धर्म और सभी जातियों को लेकर आज यहाँ निर्माण हुई है और इसलिए ये सरकार सुने न सुने हाँ हमारा तो कहना है तीन कृषि कानूनों को वापस लेना चाहिए ये एमएसपी वाला कानून बनना चाहिए बिजली वो जो बिल है वो वापस लेना चाहिए और अगर ये नहीं होगा तो जनता यूपी और उत्तराखंड के सरकार को हराएगी और उसके बाद 2024 में नरेंद्र मोदी और अमित शाह की सरकार जो पूरी प्रो कॉरपोरेट सरकार है उसको भी पूरे भारत की जनता हराएगी इसकी शुरुआत आज मुजफ्फरनगर से हो रही है That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.